Hello and thank you for being here. My name is Chrissy Hodges. Welcome to my channel. Uh, I am a certified peer support specialist working with people all over the world who live with OCD. I talk a lot about the term, the community name, Pure OCD, which is also the name of my memoir. Whoops, there we go. Um, <laughs> the Invisible Side of Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. And I can do referral consultations all over the world you're looking for therapists, go to chrissyhodges.com to find out more about that. Uh, no CD and OCD is an app. Inside their app, you can find all kinds of resources for OCD. You can also connect with different individuals that have OCD on their forums. And uh, they do telehealth um, in many, many, many places around the world. So check them out at treatmyocd.com. Just wanted to come on today uh, quickly, talk a little bit about uh, just uh, more of some clarification around um, intrusive thoughts and how OCD can show up. So we hear a lot about intrusive thoughts. OCD is intrusive thoughts, and then you have compulsions or rituals, blah, 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 blah. And sometimes the way that OCD works is it wants you to believe that you don't really have OCD. <laughs> Most of us uh, have that secondary fear, and especially if OCD, uh, it, because it feels so real, sometimes it's hard to believe that it's disordered, right? So um, it'll throw you all these different curveballs, and this is one of them. And so I just wanted to come on here and just do a, kind of a clarification video. When you are doing your Google searches <laughs> for reassurance, uh, going to Dr. Google, <laughs> um, you're usually going to find how OCD can show up, find how OCD can manifest for you. And um, unfortunately, then OCD can latch onto things and say, well, if your experience is not like this, that must mean that you don't have OCD. And so that, that can become a secondary fear. And one of the ways that that can manifest for people is they um, start to have different manifestations of OCD other than just intrusive thoughts. Or you could have intrusive thoughts and maybe that morphs later into something different like images, um, intrusive images. Um, or you might hear, hear things in your head. So, um, you know, one of the one of the things I hear a lot from people is like if you're having sexual orientation OCD. So sexual orientation OCD is when you identify, um, like I identify as straight. And so if I had sexual orientation OCD, I might have um, intrusive thoughts or I might have uh, doubts or fears or uh, that, I don't, that I'm not completely 100% certain about my sexuality. So on that spectrum, that could be, am I bi, am I gay, am I, um, asexual um am i pansexual am i in any anything that can happen on that spectrum right and so then it makes me doubt that i know what my sexuality is and how that can manifest and i hear this from bo both sides individuals that identify um as gay and they are having intrusive thoughts or um doubts about whether they're straight or not they'll hear things they'll hear almost like a voice in their head you're straight you're straight you're straight you're straight or if you're identify as straight and then you're having thoughts about am I gay and doubts about that you're gay you're gay you're gay so it's like this voice that can appear in your that, that you can have in your brain and that doesn't feel like thoughts right so and, and that's just one example this could be anything but what that also can do is when you're having intrusive um or if you feel like you're having these voices in your head then you can think to yourself oh no this isn't OCD because now I, I'm hearing voices in my head. And so that could be even a secondary fear beyond what you're already experiencing of maybe this isn't OCD, this is psychosis. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing things, I'm having delusions or um, I'm hearing voices in my head. And sometimes that's how people describe their OCD. It feels like an, a second self. It feels like this other part of you and there are things that you're that, that are being said in your head that you really can't turn off because it is like this conversation in your brain that is just um, creating all this doubt about what your intrusive thoughts are. Now, one of the reasons why we refer to it as feeling like you have a second self, and a lot of people will think that about OCD, it feels like there's two Chrissy's. Like when I was really, really sick back in my teenage years and into my early adulthood, um, it really did feel like, and this was before I even knew it was OCD, 
it really felt like there's Chrissy that the whole world sees. And then that there's this other Chrissy inside of me. I didn't know anything about her and I didn't want anything to do with her, but it, it, it just felt like there's this other person inside of me, which created and fueled this doubt of, but is this who I really am? Is this my authentic self trying to, you know, come out? And I just am, you know, trying to bury that because that's not the person that I want to be. And that can get so scary for people. And that's when you, even if you know that it's OCD, and if you're here, you know that you have OCD. You're, you're sitting here going, no, I'm the only one. <laughs> I'm the only one that does not I just found your channel and I'm just pretending. <laughs> I'm sure many of you are saying that <laughs> because everybody does. Now, um, you know, if you feel that way, then, you know, it's terrifying to you because then you think, I don't even know who I really am, which means no one else knows who I really am and that there's this second self inside of me. The reason why it feels like that is because OCD is considered ego dystonic. And so ego dystonic meaning you are who you are. You have your values, your morals, your desires, your wants, all that stuff. And then there is this other part of you, or not another part of you, but there, then you're having thoughts that don't align with that. And so normal people that don't have the OCD brain or, you know, anxiety and panic and all that, you know, they can have those kind of thoughts and dismiss them and say, wow, that's, that was bizarre and that's not what I want, not who I am. And we can't do that because of what's going on in our brain. So the fact that we can't just dismiss it or we can't just argue our way out of it logically means that we are just continuing to be saturated in that doubt, right? And so that's where we feel disconnected from ourselves, ego dystonic. That, that part that I am worried about all the time is not connected to who I am as a person. And so, but the fact that I can't stop thinking about it must mean there's some truth to it. And that's the truth we continue to seek and continue to look for when we're doing compulsions. Because compulsions is logic, right? It's arguing back with your brain from a logical standpoint. But the part of your brain that is disordered is coming from the behavioral part. So that way the length, you're, you're missing each other because you're not speaking the same language, which is what continues to fuel the cycle. So I just wanted to say, come on here and say that a lot of times when you're, you're looking at different accounts or you're looking at, when you're looking at ways to manage OCD without getting therapy, <laughs> which we all do because we're all looking for the key, right? Uh, then you might see things, I mean, you might always see people saying you have to sit with the thoughts. You have to let the thoughts be there. And then your brain might go, but I don't have thoughts. I have images, I have voices, um, and you may think to yourself, well, that must mean that I don't have OCD and there's no way that I can be treated, um, treatment won't work for me because I can't sit with these thoughts or the thoughts may have morphed into something different. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to come on here and say that it is not uncommon for people to have intrusive images or images in general and feelings, that's another thing. Um, a lot of times, what what is the phrase that people use? Oh, I guess it is like sitting sitting. That is what it is. It's sitting with when you hear that phrase, sit with the thoughts. First of all, this leaves people out that have intrusive images and have like the intrusive voice voices or they're hearing things in their head that feels like a different voice. But also, in, we're we're not including the intrusive feelings, and when people especially people that are that are having a huge degree of shame around their intrusive thoughts, they may think to themselves that the solution is to sit with the thoughts and I'm sitting there, I cannot sit with the feelings because they're so awful. Because there's usually feelings of shame and disgust and guilt and you have groinal feelings and you're having physical reaction to this and you're just sitting there in the groinal trying, <laughs> trying to sit with the thoughts. So it's really, I wanted to make sure that I said that on this video. When you are doing exposure work and response prevention, you're not just sitting with the thoughts. You're also going to be sitting with the feelings that the thoughts cause or the images cause. And that can be really, really scary. Um, we often, I just did a video about this a few days ago. We often just see OCD as this illness that produces anxiety. When in reality, it can produce all kinds of emotions and those emotions could get amplified because 
it's got, you know, it's got the engine of anxiety making it bigger and bigger and bigger. So when you are doing your response prevention, it, you can pull in those other feelings and allow yourself to sit with the feelings too, to be able to tolerate the feelings in order to make them irrelevant. That is the point of exposure response prevention is to be able to face these things and experience them when you're not triggered, meaning like you don't do it in response to being triggered. ERP needs to be done when it's scheduled every day. Or, um, you know, when I, would, when I do ERP, I put it on my calendar for the day at this time and at this time, I'm gonna do exposure for this amount of time. If I'm already triggered, I'll do it anyway because it was already on the calendar, right? But I'm not doing it in response because that in itself can become compulsive. But when I do the exposure response prevention, I'm going to target whatever the feelings are as well. I'm gonna target whatever the images are that I've already experienced. Is that scary and uncomfortable? Yes, but the goal of ERP is to prevent the compulsion. Ex exposure is part of it, but that's not the main thing preventing the response, preventing the compulsion, right? So you're now communicating directly to your brain. I am not afraid of this stuff. And um, therefore the brain will eventually make it irrelevant. That doesn't mean that images can't, uh, won't be disturbing. That doesn't mean that thoughts won't be disturbing, but the goal would be to make them irrelevant in your brain. Now, one of the, I'll just give you a really quick example before I wrap up. I am, I, I, I regularly have intrusive thoughts. So that's usually how OCD manifests for me, but it wasn't until, and I think I've mentioned this on a video too. It wasn't until I watched the movie 28 days later. <laughs> I always refer to this cause that movie just fucked with me. Um, when I watched 28 days later, years and years and years ago for the first time, that was the first time I had had intrusive images. Um, and, and, you can have intrusive images that just come out of the blue, that things that you've never seen before, but maybe you're, you know, you're having intrusive thoughts about a family member or something and you're having intrusive thoughts about their penis or something, you know, and you've never even seen it before, but you're like, oh my God, why do I keep thinking about what it looks like? You know, that could be an intrusive image, but then there's also this where I was watching the movie and I saw some, a few scenes that were really disturbing and then I knew it immediately. It was just like this gut bomb of, oh no, <laughs> I'm never gonna be able to forget that that imagery. And sure enough, after the movie, that image would come back up and back up and back up and I just could not get rid of it. And, and, and then I would feel this disgust or nausea and I thought, oh my God, I'm never gonna be able to stop thinking about this imagery. I mean, I'm thinking about what the image is right now. I mean, obviously I have emetophobia and 28 days later is blood barfing zombies. <laughs> So it's those images that like haunt me. Um, anyway, so one of the things I, I had to do um, for me, I'm not telling you to do this, but one of the things I had to do was to make those images irrelevant. So one of the things I did was I would, I rewatched the movie over and over and over and over. And when those particular scenes came up, I sat and watched them over and over and over until my brain saw that I wasn't afraid and that it no longer became a threat and it became irrelevant. Now, when I see the movie now and I own it and watch it right, you know, every once in a while, when I see the movie now, do I get some anxiety when I know that scene, those scenes are gonna come up? Absolutely. My brain remembers that trigger. It remembers that it was a threat. It remembers that it tortured me. But again, I watch those scenes and I allow my brain to almost recall and remember this is irrelevant. So the whole point is, I just wanted y'all to know that OCD can show up in so many different ways, but you're gonna see a lot of taglines, you're gonna see a lot of things on the internet that are like, oh, sit with the thoughts or intrusive thoughts. And you may see that as, oh no, that means I don't have OCD because I have intrusive images or I have intrusive voices or a voice in my head that's saying these things over and over and over. Um, that is absolutely how OCD can manifest too. Remember, we constantly struggle with that secondary fear of this is an OCD. And so we're looking for reasons. It's so funny because it's, it's almost like you find out that this is OCD typically when you're doing searches on the internet and then you start looking for reasons it's not. <laughs> and that's the typical pattern for most people. So anyway, I hope that this helped. Um, and if you are experiencing this, I just wanted you to know that you're not alone. So if you're looking for peer support or referral consultation, head on over to christyhodges.com. Um, and if you're looking for telehealth with no CD, you can go to treatmyocd.com. 
Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.